A very warm welcome to one and all. Uh, today we will be discussing on how customer data platforms enhance the value of customers and give business value to organizations. To discuss today, we have two panelists. We have Saurabh Jha, SVP and Global Head of Data and Analytics Practice in Tech Mahindra. Along with him, we also have Mark Harvey, who is the Head of Channel Partners, Asia Pacific and Japan of Segment, joining us today. And we would be discussing a lot of intrinsic factors with respect to customer data platform and its imperativeness to the organizations. Let me begin with you, Saurabh. Right. Sure. What is the importance of a CDP for an organization? What benefits do they give to the personalization aspects to end customers? Sure, thanks, Anand. So, uh, so uh, Anand, I would like to talk about a few things here. So first thing is let's look at you know, why, the genesis of why did we even need something like a CDP? And I think that requirement is because of the way consumer behavior has changed over the last decade, right? Um, and, and what I mean by that is, if, if we talk about it very widely, it's an offline to online world where the consumers have moved. More importantly, consumers have become quite fickle when it comes to their behavior online and their behavior with brands and their behavior with loyalty. Right. So, for example, you know, a customer for think of a, a normal customer who is on uh, who is browsing the web, who is on Instagram, who is on Facebook, who is on Amazon trying to, you know, trying to buy stuff. And then you have, uh, you know, then, and then you have recommendations which come up. Right. And let's say, for example, they are trying to buy something luxurious with, with a brand that they knew from the past, from the offline world. But suddenly there is a new recommendation that comes up with a new startup, which, you know, which has. Uh, something of something of value to them, probably at a lower cost, and so on and so forth. Now, this fickle behavior is 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 I think one of the key factors uh, that that is driving the need for CDP because if a company wants to you know manage one their customer expectations, two stickiness, three loyalty, four you know to know know their customers so intrinsically that they know exactly at what time. You know, uh, you know what what day of the week, what week of the month, and what month of the year, what their customers would need, the kind of personalization, and 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 even take it beyond that. What what is that customer really interested in? See, when I'm going out to shop for a simple thing like a shirt, for example, does the brand know already what are the kind of what what are the colors of shirt I typically buy, right? And and same with shoes, or same with and and we can take it not just for retail shopping, the same behavior is seen with fintech, with healthcare and so on, where everything is online. Now, capturing all this information across, uh, you know, across different, uh, I would say online modes and learning about your customer, bringing it to one place so that you can market to them effectively, really personalize your offerings, your value proposition to the customer. That is where CDP uh, comes into the picture. And I think that is the genesis of why we need something like a CDP platform and why the traditional platforms are not able to achieve it. So that is the strategic reason why CDP is required. Now let's look at what does it really help with a couple of things. So one is, can we do this with traditional technologies? Yes, but there'll be a lot of manual effort required. That uh, There'll be a lot of lagginess in, in, in the time between when we want to market something to customer in trying to gather all the data from different systems, trying to bring it together, trying to gain insights. By that time, probably that moment of truth would have passed already, right? So, uh, so it, it's, it'll be too slow. So while the data can still be organized and mobilized, it'll be too slow. So that the speed and the automation that is required, that is again, that is something that CDP brings to the fore. Reducing human errors, you know, <clears throat> time to market, and so on. So these are the obvious things. Third thing is, of course, you know, in today's era, while you know, while customers are all over the place and their behavior is like like we talked about, but there is the whole angle of privacy, right? So there has to be a centralized place where you know where we have a very clear definition of the kind of privacy laws that we need to follow in a particular geography with a particular. Uh, customer with the kind of uh, you know with the, with the kind of 
uh, approvals that the customer has given as to you know what can we reach out to them for uh, you know whether it is have they accepted to receive marketing emails and so on and of course that is when gdpr and ccpa come into the picture so all of that can be uh, you know can be very nicely managed and governed through a, a through a centralized cdp platform so i think that is uh, that is why you know cdp is required by organizations today if they need to uh, if they really need to own their customers they need to understand their customers and they need to be with their customers throughout their journey mark thanks. yeah um thanks swarab i think um i'd like to break it down um into you know what i guess taking a, a 35,000 foot view and looking at what a CDP is fundamentally, um, you know, who needs one and, and why a CDP is important. Um, first up, you know, a customer data platform is essentially a piece of aggregation software that combines um, data from multiple tools, um, you know, by which it creates a, a, a sort of a dynamic centralized customer database. Um, and within that, it contains data from, you know, multiple sources or multiple, um, but multiple touch points. That database can then be segmented essentially into nearly, you know, a nearly endless number of ways, um, which to which can create, you know, a more personalized customer experience, and then also helps um, drive customer insights off the back of it. Um, however, you know, it's important to highlight here that that said, it's important to state that a CDP is not just for marketeers. Um, in essence, marketing product and analytics tools all benefit from a CDP. Um, they're only as useful as the, the data that's ingested into them. Um, and I think there's an old adage, and that is that you know, delinquent data in, delinquent data out. So I think if you get the foundational data layer right, everything else theoretically um, falls into place and becomes, becomes easier. Um, if you look at who needs a CDP, I think... Um, any company that requires digital customer engagement or puts customer experience first. So, you know, for example, we, you know, we have a presence across, you know, a multitude of different verticals globally. So, um, for example, um, in a in a fintech space um, and in you know digital banking um, and crypto. So, for example, um, Square Payments or, or JP Morgan Chase have been customer of, of ours for some time. Um, you look at the CPG and retail space. You know, big global brands like Nike or you know from a local standpoint, um, uh, e-commerce platforms across, you know, uh, particularly Zalora, um, one of the largest providers across APAC. Um, and then, you know, again, in the entertainment and media space, for example, we were, were with the likes of Foxtel, so, or sorry, Fox Entertainment. So really any company that requires digital customer engagement or put cust puts customer experience first, I think is, you know, needs a CDP. Um, in terms of why a CDP is important, I think, look, businesses are looking to engage with customers across multiple channels. And I think much of this is is now driven through through digital channels, um, and I think that's probably the main driver as to why it's becoming important. That coupled with with, with another reason, and that is the fact that there is apparently um, over two and a half quintillion bytes of data being generated every day. Now I did some research on that, and that is seventeen zeros worth of data um, in a, in a day. That's a huge amount of data, and I think that the CDP is a perfect tool um, to make sense of that. Um, you know, much of that data obviously is, is unstructured as well. So if I, if I give us a quick rundown in terms of, you know, Twilio segment or specifically what a, a CDP does, in essence, it collects data from, um, you know, multiple touch points, it governs, um, and it, uh, I guess it, it provides an element of rigor to that data. It then synthesizes it by building out user profiles and, and audiences accurately and quickly. Um, and then it essentially activates that data for use with downstream tools uh, and destinations. However, the real challenge here is how you do all of that at scale. So I think there's, there's two really good use cases, um, one from an engineering standpoint and actually one from, um, from a marketing slash retail standpoint. There's actually um, an education technology platform provider in India um, that leverage um, our connections um, uh, 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 sorry, solution. Um, in their case, 
what they wanted to do was understand how their customers were consuming their content on that platform and some of the reasons for low engagement levels. What the CDP did was allow them to track those data points and ingest those data points uh, into um, their analytics technology that we, they were using. That then allowed them to tailor their product and their customer experience accordingly. What it also did from an engineering um, perspective, and this is the exciting bit for me, is there was an instant um, return on investment because by deploying segment, they ultimately saved, um, I think it was upwards of 10 full-time headcounts that were historically used to make sense of that data pre-CDP. So now you can see you know, other uses and other use cases for this. Um, the second one is a, is a really great local um, use case as well. It's a, it's a company called Zalora, um, a leading fashion e-retailer um, across Asia. Now Zalora turned to segment to standardize its data collection. Uh, what it wanted to do was achieve a, a complete view of its customer base and, and provide faster experimentation. Now, with the data infrastructure in place, what Zalora did was manage to double its, um, its customer conversion rates by activating real-time data that was provided by the CDP to enable segmentation and to target its highest value customers more accurately and faster. So that was the, the value there. So, you know, whether it was ROI and it's, um, and it's um, you know, um, I guess engineering stakeholders, or whether it's a, a marketing slash retail use case in terms of, you know, um, speeding up its conversion rates, there's a multitude of reasons as, you, uh, as to why you would use a CDP. So for me, in summary, um, any customer across any industry that requires digital customer engagement or puts customer experience first needs a CDP. Thanks, Mark. Quintillion tons of data. It's a pretty interesting Seven, number. 17 zeros. That's a lot of data every day. <laughs> While you mentioned the volume of data, right? There are other aspects within the data landscape, which is very imperative for a customer data platform. Yeah. Would you mind possibly elucidating that slightly more for us and for our audience? Yeah, of course. Um, so in terms of, I think, what is what is driving the change in the data landscape, I think there's there's actually three things. Um, the first, as I just mentioned, is that is that is that sheer amount of data that's being generated. Um, and then I guess the question there is, how do you manage that data at scale? That's the first point. The second point for me is the death the death of third party cookies on a global scale, um, you know, and the importance of first party data, and and the last um, which Swarov's actually touched on is, is privacy and consent, and it's that that changing um, privacy landscape and specific, uh, specifically from a consent standpoint, you know, you can take for example Thailand's. Uh, personal data privacy act locally um, or in, in india for example and um, changes to digital lending regulations um, or you know in, in europe gdpr regulations in the us ccpa and, and swab's touched on that so i think the third point there is is that changing privacy landscape which is as important and is driving a lot of this this change so i guess look in in summary the exponential growth of data you know year on year um you know and be able to make sense of that data um the death of third party cookies major driver um and then last but not least that that changing privacy landscape and swak swarab over to you what are your thoughts so see from a from a data standpoint uh, i have a little uh, okay there are a few things that i want to touch upon which are quite foundational to a successful cdp implementation and and uh, <clears throat> i want to make like a motherhood statement here which is you know whether it is cdp whether it is you know artificial artificial intelligence machine learning whatever or analytics of any kind, if your data is not proper, all of these things are useless, right? Now, when it comes to CDP, there are a few things that we need to very quickly understand. See, we are trying to connect customer data across different channels and experiences. Now, what I mean by that is, for example, a customer, you know, the custom, the kind of data you will gather with the customer's experience at a POS, okay, at a POS is going to be very different from the customer data you will gather when they're sh shopping online, when they're browsing online, or when they're calling your call center to make a complaint or even track, you know, talk about the shipment or anything of that sort, right? So the kind of data that is coming through from the customer or of the customer is very different, right? Now, you need a data platform, okay? So that first of all, that data needs to be collected. The way the data platform needs to be built and the way then this data has to be provided to CDP, that becomes very important. That pipeline becomes very important. 
data quality becomes very important. You know, aggregating that data, uh, governing that data, all of these things which we know for decades, you know, that basically any outcome from a bad data is, is, is bad outcome. So it's as simple as that. So we need to, so the, you know, when we are trying, so when we try to, uh, uh, you know, when we are trying to implement CDP for our customers, for example, the first part is always about understanding what is the business outcome that they really want, right? Second part of the second part that we need to understand is where is where is it? What are the sources that they are getting their data from? And then connecting the two with the correct pipelines, with the right governance model, with the right data quality, and 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 the right pipelines. So making that data available in, in the right format, in the right quality is very, very important. So having a modern data architecture, and you know, we talked about the volume of data, 2.5 quintillion bytes, uh, right? How do you manage that volume of data, right? At scale and at speed, because you know, a lot of this data is real-time data, which is just flowing in continuously because you are trying to, uh, you know, you are trying to stay relevant to your customers. You know, like I uh, said in the previous example, in the previous question that if you are slow then by the time you touch your customer the moment of truth is gone so you need to you need to stay updated you need to have a process where real time data is is being processed properly it is merged properly with your batch data or the customer profile data that you already have and their past experiences with your company so the data pipelines have to be absolutely perfect right which are feeding into your cdp platform that's on one side of it the other side of it is as Mark was touching upon, that the, the, the usability of CDP is not only for marketers. It goes way beyond that. It can feed into you know, different teams within a company. So say, for example, based on the information in the CDP, a lot of different analytics and insights can be derived and which can be provided to your product development team, for example. Right? So uh, you know, as, as a feedback loop, as to you know, if this is what the customers are, are, uh, if this is the customer's reaction or the customer's liking for a particular product, or if these are the dislikes for a particular product, how can we change the product itself, right? So it's not just about marketing. I think there are multiple feedback loops that can go in. Uh, one is to the marketing team, one is to the product team, one is also back to, for example, the customer care team and so on and so forth. So I think see, it, it's about how do you want to use this data? You can make it a, you know, uh, you know, a, one trick pony uh, or you can you know you can really uh, go all out and, and utilize this platform in mul multiple ways and uh, yeah so from a data standpoint i think these are some very important things that we need to keep in mind no, i agree with that no, i agree thanks for that saurabh in the room today we have uh, two biggies in the room one is uh, tech mahindra who are pioneers in system integration, and um, they've been uh, pretty strong with respect to consulting and customer focus. On the other hand, we have Segment, which is a very premium platform provider for customer data, and possibly the biggest in the world today as far as customer data platforms is concerned. Right? How does Tech Mahindra and Segment work together to bring a holistic CDP or a holistic customer data platform into the market? And what do each one of you bring to the table to make a customer data platform very imperative or very important to your clients? Saurabh, let me start with you, if it's okay. Sorry, is that for me? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, sure, sure. Um, all right, uh, Anand good. So because this is pretty much in continuation of uh, you know my previous uh, answer, so that is around the kind of capabilities you need within an organization. So like I said, you know, uh, let, let's look at very basic factors that we are handling here: large amounts of data, different sources of data, different types of data, the risks associated with that data based on customer consent, right? And these are what will actually uh, drive the kind of you know, data landscape or ecosystem that you need within the organization for a successful CDP implementation. Now, of course, like I said, we, whenever we go in uh, for CDP implementation, the business aspect is very important. And so what is the outcome that you need and what are the sources that you're getting your data from? So that is the starting point. Now, when we talk about volume of data and the sources of data, it becomes very important to create the right data architecture, right? So that is the second step. And given the volume, uh, you know, I have to say that it's very important that you know we bring cloud into the picture because as of today, cloud is the only place where you know this volume of data can really be managed. 
right? So, uh, uh, and not just volume, the different types of data uh, pipelines that can be managed, whether it's you know, a real time batch, uh, event driven and so on and so forth. So all of those things can be managed. And then of course, when we talk about <clears throat> data risk and privacy based on customer consent, that becomes very important and hence data governance capabilities become very important. So having the right data governance uh, framework, the model, and the org structure, because data governance is not something that just uh, that a tool can take care of. You have data governance automation tools for sure, but without the right org structure, you know, data governance will be a failure, right? So that's again very important. Data quality, like I said, you know, uh, the the data that flows into a CDP at, will determine how useful the CDP is. Right, so whether it is your customer care data, whether it's online behavior data, whether it's real time data, and so on and so forth. So, uh, so these are the various factors. Like I said, so one is so again just to kind of summarize, one is to have the right data platform at the right place, which is like I said, cloud to handle that volume of data. Data governance, uh, not only capabilities but the right org structure and the tools uh, to manage that data, and also uh, take care of the security and privacy aspects. Third thing is data quality, very, very important of the uh, data that is feeding into your system, right? And then creating the right data pipelines and the right data architecture to make that data available in, 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 a, uh, in a more conducive format to the CDP systems, whether it's via APIs or whether it's via services. I mean, you know, depending on the uh, architecture that has, been that has been adopted in an enterprise. So these are the various uh, things that we typically take care of when, when we are implementing a CDP uh, uh, you know, with, with any of our customers. Thanks for that, Saurav. Uh, Mark? Yeah, I agree, actually, with everything that Swaram said then. And I think, you know, if we take that sort of a step further and the company's made the decision that they need a CDP, if I, if I look at the skills and internal capabilities that are that are needed to, say, implement that, that CDP, I think it centres around people, or what I like to call um, the human in the loop. And I think as a CDP... And I like this saying, um, we're an island until we connect to something. Um, so, you know, we need technology experts like Tech Mahindra to be able to provide that all important piece. Um, so if I look at the, the skills and attributes required, I think it focuses around three things, people, process, technology. And I think Tech Mahindra are perfectly positioned to provide the strategy, to provide the consulting and to provide the delivery capabilities for enterprise customers that have identified that they need a CDP. Um, furthermore, and I think this is super important, and I think it's not highlighted enough, um, that you know, once there is a, a minimal viable product and once there is a CDP that's been implemented, um, there's actually this all important piece, which is that change management that is required, not only during the delivery stage, but also um, when it's been proved out and that the solution is actually embedded in a company. Um, I think it's that all important change man management piece that allows you to really derive value and turn the screw when it comes to, to the technology. And that, that can only really be effectively delivered by a, a certified and experienced consultant, um, you know, by, for example, a, a Tech Mahindra. Um, from a segment perspective, our partner pro program is built for, for best of breed, and that's best of breed SIs and GSIs that can deliver consulting, delivery and change management services. Um, and that includes, by the way, integration work and hands-on keyboard capability that we wouldn't have um, internally. That's where we rely um, on best of breed um, you know, SI partners and delivery partners. Um, we offer a, a full co-sell motion uh, alongside our partners, and we will work alongside you um, as the CDP experts, essentially, um, in presenting, you know, what, what I call a combined best of breed approach. Um, and I, that's the that's best of breed technology combined with best of breed delivery. Um, so I guess to summarize, um, I'm going to go back to this point again. The, I think the focus needs to be centered around best of breed, and it's best of breed people, best of breed process, and best, best of breed technology. Great. Thanks for that, Mark. A pleasure. And uh, it's been a wonderful session thus far. And uh, it's pretty informative about the need of CDP and how Tech Mahindra and Segment can work together to deliver a wonderful customer data platform. Thanks for this wonderful session. And a good day to you. Thank you, Cheshwar. Thank you, Anand.